innovate, enable. The National Stock Exchange of India has been actively involved with initiatives to educate the young generation of our country on the importance of financial management. One such initiative is NSE Finwiz that focuses on educating and advising the young workforce of the country on wealth management to enhance financial literacy and to empower Insurance them. Insurance is for protection and investment is for growth. Another program facilitated by NSC IPFT is NSC Financial Quest. This inter-school financial quiz contest goes an extra mile by educating the young students on fundamentals of finance. On the buzzer, what is this? It's the formula for the simple interest. Simple interest is the right answer. Under the NSC Financial Quest Base Camps banner, the program engages students around the year through workshops on various topics, projects, interactive videos, and quizzes. DiCaprio is bouncing checks of Pan Am. Plus 75 on that one. Plus 75. To facilitate these two programs, NSC along with CNBC TV18 has travelled across the country to bridge the wide knowledge gap in terms of finance. In this episode of NSE FinWiz, we are all set to achieve our objectives once again by gauging young professionals in a new city. Hello and welcome to Season 4 of NSE FinWiz, powered by CNBC TV 18. And I'm your host, Nitya Balakrishnan. Today, my team and I are in the hot and sultry campus of one of the leading cement and concrete mixers in our country, ACC in Chhattisgarh, Jamal. <laughs> ACC Limited is India's foremost manufacturer of cement and ready mixed concrete with 17 modern cement factories, ready mixed concrete plants, a vast distribution network, and a countrywide spread of sales offices. The name ACC is synonymous with cement and enjoys a high level of equity in the Indian market. The company has been a trendsetter and noted benchmark in cement and concrete technology since it was established in 1936. ACC has a unique track record of innovative research, product development and specialized consultancy services. NSC Finwiz visited the Riper plant of ACC along with the experts to gauge the thoughts and notions of the employees on financial planning and wealth management with the theme Dreams Come True. I have invested in, uh, I have bought a house in Baroda. Apart from that, I am investing in SIPs regularly in uh, diversified investment, short term, mid term, mid cap equities, as well as I have invested a part in gold and some insurance. We have to have a clear vision as to uh, how much uh, uh, wealth is required at each and every step of the life. Basically, I love to travel. So I try to invest uh, my money to get at least that kind of cost which I can, uh, you know, use at the time of travel. So I go for RDs or uh, stock investments. Hello and welcome to Season 4 of NSC Fitness powered by CNBC TV 18. And I'm your host, Nitya Balakrishnan. Today, my team and I have traveled to Raipur in Chhattisgarh and I'm joined by two very special guests on the show. We have Mr. Tanveer Alam and Mr. Harshwaradhan Rukta. Thanks so much for once again joining us on the season of NSC Finviz. And of course, we're sitting in the campus of one of the largest cement companies in the country, ACC in Jamul. And thank you so much to all of you for being part of this show. My first question, Harsh, before we kickstart this uh, one-on-one on personal finance, is there ever a right age to start investing? And I'd like you to throw some light on the power of compounding here to talk about how early is it mandatory to start setting aside savings start investment. Now we take an example. Now if an individual wanted to save, irrespective of the income level, wished to save, you know, and join an organized sector, 1,000 rupees is something that everybody can save. I mean, even in their first salary. Now, the question is if you put this 1,000 rupees aside for a period of 30 years, okay, just for a period of 30 years, and you invest in the right product, which generates a return of say 14% per annum compounded, the corpus that this, this, that this individual will accumulate after 30 years with this 1,000 rupees per month is 54 lakhs. So that's the power of compounding. 
Now the same individual feels I have you know, just joined my you know just joined work. Let me settle a bit. It's my age to enjoy myself. Let me buy myself you know luxury items and think about it five years later. It's too early for me to do that. So what he does is he postpones this decision of investing for five years. So instead of 30, uh, saving for thirty years, he has invested for now twenty five years. Now this reduction of five years of investing will reduce his end corpus from 54 lakhs to 26 and a half lakhs. So it's going to be less than half. So that's the cost of delay. So you're answering your question, when is the right age to invest? If you haven't started now, irrespective of your age, you're already too late. Fair enough. Now, starting as early as you can, probably the day you get your first salary is the word really coming in. But if I can ask you to make what are you know the new age tools of investment? Where can you park your funds? Because when it comes to Indians, more so it's always a fixed deposit, a savings account, you know, a recurring deposit. You talk about PPF, but what are the other avenues of investing? Now, one of the first thing possibly you could mix together is mix your tax savings and your normal savings together. That is one way of actually doing it because that is purpose forces you to actually save for saving tax, but. The new age investment today don't go with the conventional way of actually saving in say uh, a PPF account or a FD. So today I just do a parallel comparison. Now if you invested in a product which is called ELSH, which is a tax saving mutual fund and vis a vis you did the same thing in a PPF account. So the new age product is a tax saving mutual fund that we do and the age old product which is a favored product is PPF which everybody does. Suppose 1 lakh rupees you've invested for the last 15 years, your investment all would have been 15 lakhs. And on maturity of 15 years, the PPF is locked in for 15 years. After 15 years, your PPF amount would be approximately 34 and a half lakh. That 15 lakh become 34 and a half. Any guess what would your tax saving ELSS mutual fund become after 15 years? Same 15 lakh rupees. At least six of the fund would have given you a crore rupees by now. That's the difference of the new age product and the convention. How many of us here, quick show of hands, are directly invested in the equity markets, uh, you know, via mutual funds or any other schemes? How many of us actually use ELSS as a uh, tax savings? SIP? So this is something that I want you to comment on, Marsh. We are seeing most number of hands being raised for, you know, a systematic investment uh, plan. Talk to us about an SIP versus an ELSS and what really are the benefits of uh, you know investing in the equity markets given that volatility is something that generally scares all of us. So let's look at equity investment as an asset class which over a period of time will give you inflation adjusted positive returns. Sure. So you will actually generate wealth. Now it's going to come with risk. So how do I mitigate the risk? How do I manage your volatility? That's the concern all of us have. If you had 120,000 to invest, 120,000 to invest, I'm giving a simple example. You do not invest 120,000 at one shot because you don't know which side the market for tomorrow. What you do is you put 10,000 rupees every month over a period of 12 months. So, irrespective of the level the market is at, you have bought. So, you would have an average of one year. Similarly, if you have a long term requirement to continue doing this for a period of 30 years, 40 years, or 20 years for that matter and you will keep averaging your cost of purchase. So when you average yourself, you've mitigated that risk of volatility in the market. So that's how effectively you can use uh, SIP, mitigate the risk and still at the same time get a double figure returns which actually pays inflation. Talking about ELS, ELSS that we spoke about, you are doing an SIP into an equity fund. SIP is not a product by itself, it is a method to invest in a product. So it's a systematic investment plan. There are two choices. One is to invest in an equity which you want to do. Now, if you also want to save tax, you can invest in an equity fund which is categorized and allocated for tax saving purposes and recognized by the government to give offer you tax benefits. So you invest in an equity fund, but it is also going to give you tax benefits. The same difference. The only only difference is that there is going to be a three-year blocking because you get a tax benefits. If you do not want tax benefits, you invest in an equity fund without any locking. So that choice is yours. So SIP is a method, not a product by itself. Is there a right mix in your portfolio to have if you know I was making 40,000 and setting aside 40,000 for investment? Segregate. All your goals will not be long. There will be some short term goals, some medium term goals and some long term goals. Your short term goals 
should be met with a less risky investment like a bond fund which is nothing but a substitute to a fixed deposit the mid term could be a mix of your equity and bond fund which is a balanced fund and a long term goals should always be funded through equity so this in itself you do you create your own asset allocation fair enough now if i can throw the spotlight on arun saxena who's the deputy general manager in the project department here two crore of the kind of corpus that he wants to accumulate on a monthly basis set aside 30000 rupees time horizon of about 6 years a is it achievable and what are the best uh, tools for you to look at when it comes to achieving this investment goal when you invest there are three things that you look at safety liquidity and return so if your time horizon is less than 5 years the focus should be more on safety and liquidity than chasing the return you can start investing in say a little riskier asset so that will help you uh, uh, get a better return but with 30000 rupees annual return so on a monthly basis in an annual basis it approximately about 3.6 lakhs in about 6 years is approximately uh, so pretty good about 20 and 20 and lakhs okay the 20 lakh rupees even if it's giving a return of about 12 14% will become in a 6 years approximately uh, 40 50 lakh rupees not too much so in best in 6 years you could get is in the best need about 40 50 lakh rupees if the equity market does well you guys let me get fahim khan to manager the ni department here to actually ask his query because it's very similar and uh, to uh, you know the earlier one but it goes through the importance on the power of compounding to cross the kind of purpose 30000 uh, every month on the time horizon is 20 years there is one average performing for as of which are existed over the last 20 years if you started 10000 rupees as i in that fund for 20 years so you would have invested means a sum of 1 lakh 20 in 20 years to 24 lakh rupees right so what do you see your 24 lakh after 20 years would have been that fund and i need the fund later on and you can actually go check Any guess? It is more than 80 crores. 80 lakhs. The amount would have been 2.95 crores. So your 24 lakh rupees annually would have become 2.95 crores, almost 10 times. That is all. All right. That understands the little big bit of right here. All I just need to do is to stay tuned. A whole host of personal finance queries answered on the other side. Now you start looking at investing for growth. 
Why? Because money stream of income coming in has not been disrupted, money that comes inside has already been protected, and then comes growth. So growth is the first step, not the first one. So growth, growing your assets, growing your you know, lifestyle, increasing your lifestyle, creating wealth for yourself, there is when the investment strategy comes into place. There is when you have a taste, get it, and we spoke about all those things. So fourth element is get free spending. We call it get free spending. You have the right to enjoy your wealth. There are certain things that you can do in the 20s which you cannot do in the 50s. So if we are advising you to you know, sacrifice all your likings and you know, your hobbies right now, only to pursue the 50s, it's not going to be possible. And it does not make sense because you also want to enjoy your wealth, which you work on. And learning for yourself, you don't only want to spend. So the fourth step comes when you plan and budget even your expenditures. And if you've taken first, second and third steps in place, then you have all the right to enjoy with your money. And if you have done proper financial planning, then you will invariably have money left for your expenditures. And you will spoil yourself. You will buy an iPhone 7, you will move to a bigger car, more than welcome to do it. So you have to achieve that level of guilt free spending. What does it mean? When you spend, it's not going to get you that you something else. So the moment you achieve the final step of spending is not going to get you at all. That is the time you achieve your financial plan in totality. Uh, both of you come in here. When you talk about saving for retirement, how would you go about it? Uh, start as early as possible with your first salary. By the way, you have tax deducted out of your first salary. This also, yeah, you need to create a retirement corpus from your first salary and put it aside. Just like how government takes away money, your retirement. Uh, taxation retirement for the retirement body has to take that money. And any particular method of investing towards your retirement? Retirement fund? Through a systematic investment plan and an equity fund for retirement is a must. Even women also, I think, up to women also. Even if you are looking at an early retirement, because a lot of people get married, take four sabbatical, it could be, or it could be your financial freedom. Suppose you want to retire at about 40, 45 and want to do trekking and or want to do adventure sports. For that also, you should look at retirement on an equity first. In fact, if I can just ask both of you, when you do talk about the next thing after multiplying your money and creating that wealth, a lot of people do not focus on how to prepare a will and when to prepare a safeguarding that multiplied money. If you can throw uh, you know, some pointers for us in that See, basically, when you, uh, when that is, this is, first of all, whatever investment that you have had, ensure that you have all the details in one place. Okay? And more than one family of yours know about that investment. Okay? Two, all those investments must have an organization. See, when you are writing a bill, it's nothing but a declaration stating that these are your assets, okay, these are what your investments are, and this is how you want to get distributed if you are not That's exactly it. These are things that you want. Absolutely. So it's not just important to invest right, multiply your wealth, but also safeguard that wealth and ensure that it reaches the right hands <coughs> is something that all of us have to keep in mind. Is the word coming in from our experts? On that note, another quick break right here on NSE Filmist. But stay tuned, rapid fire question and answers on the other side. Personal finance experts. Can I have a show of hands, please, and the microphone to one of the gentlemen? Yeah. Uh, my question is uh, how and who will make the will? Is there any, any online support for making will? There are companies for online will writing services, uh, but uh, you can write the will for your own self. Okay. And if there is a fear that there can be a dispute, okay, then you can get the will registered. That's the but. Registration is not mandatory, but you have to write the will. Right, so is very simple as I mentioned. Just get the prerequisites of a will. That you know, it has to be. It's, you know, you title it as a will. You start with saying that I'm in sound mind. I have written without any pressure from anybody. Okay, and this is my last will. That also I need to mention. What is the subject matter? You can write that. You can say that, you know, and at the end of it, you need to sign it. Get a witness by two people. If you can write a letter, you can write your appraisal reports. 
will is simpler than that. And, and it need not be on a stamp paper. It need not be registered. Okay, and you can also videograph it. In case you want to uh, you know, videograph and say that this is my will, you can even do that. Uh, my question is, uh, in SIP investment, how can we save capital gain tax? Unfortunately, uh, capital gains tax you cannot save through mutual fund or SIP mode. It has to be through uh, investing in NHGI or RSE bond, which is under section 54 uh, E. As I said, if you are trying to invest for a short term horizon of 1, 2 and 3 years, we prefer to invest in a bond fund. It is advisable. So that will not destroy capital. It will give you a return which is little marginally better than an FDM. Thank you so much. Well, on that note, it's time for a quick wrap on this particular episode of NSE Fitness. <coughs> uh, thank you so much, Ashwagandh Rumta and Tanvira for joining us on this show. Everybody here at ACC Jamul, thanks a ton for being part of this special episode. And to my entire team, thanks for watching. With this program, I just uh, want to relook my investment, which I have done so far and opportunity, explore the opportunity of new investment in future. The takeaway uh, from this uh, session uh, that uh, I have to rearrange re uh, my uh, finance and uh, investments plan considering uh, uh, long term goals and I also learned that uh, by doing small in investment and regular in in investments give me uh, personal wealth which leads to give me the stability and happiness in my life.